tonight! Just as Mythic Nighthold releases into the world of live servers, patch 7.2 hits the PTR. What kind of craziness is this? Well, let's convert to raid and we present the Battle.net News. <laughs> The Battle.net News Broadcast Bunker in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Today is January 24th. God, time, time is flying, I tell you. Uh, 2017, and it is now 10.13 p.m. Central Time, right on time, as always. Uh, thanks for joining us from all around the Blizzard universe. My name is Pat Crane. I am your uh, your host today, As and the players. They're also here. Let's check in first from Line of Sight Gaming. Uh, he's in the middle of raid right now. Go, go figure. It's <laughs> Taffa. Hey, Taffa. Hey, guys. Yeah, my my raid team's being nice enough that they're carrying me to my rave bear. Like I've been waiting for this bear since for this skin since Legion launched. Like I rushed into into the dungeons to try to get the achievement for one of the skins, but it's locked behind the balance of power which is an extremely long quest line, which culminates in having to kill Gul'dan. But yep. we're on Elison, so one more kill, and I get my Rave Bear. Yeah! And can't miss it. Can't miss it. Right, no, you even, can't. Even for a show. Even for a show. <laughs> we got to do this. Well, you know, it's called Convert to Raid. It's not called Convert to just sit on your hands. Now is it? So yeah, exactly. Right. I got to go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> that, that's Speaking my exit, apparently. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, let's go over to the man. For, uh, he plays Overwatch, and he uh, plays Hearthstone and WoW, and other things. His name is John Horseman. Hello, John. Hey, Pat. Hey, I, I've got a factoid for you this factoid. week. Factoid. Did you know that this week, or today, not this week, today is International Compliment Day? It is. I knew this. So it is, and so I've prepared a few compliments. Oh, look for at you. you guys! Well, not you, Pat. I actually couldn't yeah. think of a right. of a, no, of a very sense. good one. That makes so, total sense. You know, you're 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 fine. You're a fine young man. Yeah, but uh, Tatfa, <laughs> for you, <laughs> thanks. I have when you're not in my line of sight, I don't feel like gaming. Oh, so oh, oh. and actually, uh, I also one prepared brilliant. one. That's very well nice. Done, Thank you, sir. Well done. I know. Sir. Very creative. Very, very creative. I also prepared one for Sharku, who was supposed uh, he to couldn't be here, be here last he, minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I, I feel like it might brighten his day to hear it. So, Pat, I'm going to need okay. your help a little right. bit on this one. Okay. Um. Here, I'll. So just whatever, whatever I ask you there. to do. All right. Whatever I ask you to do, to, you know, just just play along. Okay. So um, they say that imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. Uh -huh. So I think that's the best compliment I can give Sharku. So, Pat, I need you to ask me what I've been up to this week. Uh, should I call you Sharku? Yeah, sure. All right. Hey, uh, Shark, what have you been up to this week? Not, okay. not even saying anything. You gotta watch the video. What happened to the audio? Oh, oh crap! What happened to the audio? Oh, it's a video thing. Oh, uh oh, <laughs> no. uh oh, no. uh oh. Oh uh -oh. man, here it is. All right, been a few oh, weeks. Man, I don't know. Oh, okay. There it is. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. Ask me. Ask me how many times I wiped on raid last week. Uh, how many times did you wipe on raid last week? It's like my hundred and seventh or something. <laughs> and. Ask me how how can I wipe so many times on a single raid night? How how can you wipe so many times on a single raid night, Shark? I just don't think. That's, that's all I Ever. have. That's Ever. all I have for you. No, that's good. That's good. That's my uh, that's my Sharku impersonation uh, total, for the week. Total fail on the uh, on the. I know episode. I had it set out to the wrong audio output. Uh, that's so right. that's right. Well, we you heard it, it the first time, and that's all that matters. 
We're doing it live. <laughs> We're well, doing it live. Well, welcome everybody, and uh, and thanks for joining us for yet another fun-filled convert to raid. And we have a bunch of stuff to talk about again, uh, especially when it comes to raiding, uh, especially when it comes to WoW, uh, so much. because there is so much stuff to talk about. But first, uh, let's kind of go around the room and see what's going on. Taffa, uh, what boss? Did you finish that boss? Yeah, Elisan's down. You can see Gildan summoning in the background. Oh, he's yeah. he's trying to get the Burning Legion to show up or whatever, but yep. I don't know, we're about to stop him and say, hey, not today. Not today, Gildan. Awesome. Uh, what else have you been up to other than one-shotting Gildan? Uh, uh, not sleeping and <laughs> creating videos, basically. Like Yes. This yeah. is this videos, is what videos, I, videos. This is what I want to talk to you about because the, the all of the videos are out now, right? All, all the videos are out for line of sight gaming. All the two minute tips are up for all the bosses. Normal and mm -hmm. and uh, heroic modes are totally there for everybody. So go enjoy that. And it was uh, a bunch of hard work for you. And then uh, patch seven point two is on the PTR. So go go have fun. Quit yeah, sitting like, around you slacker. <laughs> I know. Like I mean, it's it's going to be kind of cool moving forward. Like I've never been. I'm actually feeling kind of stress -free, free at the moment. Like, I don't think I've actually felt like this since the Legion started. There's artifact power to be farming. Videos, videos, videos. Emerald Nightmare, Nightmare came out and Trail of Valor right after it. Yeah. And then Nighthold right after that. And so it's just been like nonstop. But like right now, I like, I'm kind of good with artifact power. I don't need to... I can actually just like do some. I could play Hots if I wanted to. It's gonna what? be crazy. Oh, yeah, right. Wow, that's awesome. But, but I mean, as far as the videos go, um, this is the fastest that we've ever got them out. So I mean, pretty excited about that. Um, mm -hmm. Seven days in, and we have all ten up. So that's that's a very exciting thing. But I mean, as far as our process goes, we generally, I haven't, we haven't been able to get into the PTR for testing on the bosses so every sure. time we make videos it's always day of we go in kill and then start making them and so i know a lot of guilds and a lot of teams will be you know ahead of us in progression as far as getting our videos out and stuff but right. <laughs> hopefully hopefully moving into the future um we'll be able to get onto the ptr a little bit more and get get at least some ptr videos out that well, will at least get people an idea of what to expect before they go in on live and then hopefully sure. get footage so we can get those out a little bit quicker. Um, sure. Well, if you thought you, you guys have been slow in past whatevers, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever listened to the show when we used to do the, the boss guides and stuff like that. When we would do, <laughs> when we would do yeah. like a short explanation of the boss fight, we were seriously weeks and weeks and weeks behind by the time we got to the end boss because we would only do like one boss every other week or something like that. And by the end, it was just like... We just we would just give up because it was like now everybody knows how this boss goes so let's just goof on it and be done and <laughs> so or yeah. do like a culmination thing where it was like all right let's do uh for the last thing we'll we'll just do five bosses together and we'll just whatever who cares so yeah I mean it's... which is which is kind of why we stopped I mean you know the, the, there have been. <laughs> It's tough doing a podcast about raiding, trying to do uh, all the raid things, and then mm -hmm. be that far behind of where everybody else is at. So, yeah. It's yeah, I mean, I, I definitely know how you feel just as far as, like, even feeling like the work you're doing is relevant. Because, I mean, I know there's a lot of people and probably the majority of the WoW community that hasn't seen Gul'dan yet. Like, right. Like, looking at it, I mean, from my sure. perspective, like, I mean, I'm a raider. And other raiders are going to, you know, know what's going on that first, very first day and just jump in and go. And so for those people, like, our guides are super basic anyways. And so we're not even, like, really directing them towards that crowd. I mean, they're informative, but it, it is a basic guide. If you want more, more detail, there are better guides out there sure. for that. But, I mean, like, our whole purpose is to give people the flavor of the fights and stuff. But, I mean, it's just rough because, like, you do so much work and then, like you're saying... The first week's gone, and you already feel. You, yeah, you feel irrelevant. like you're. You, and it's just like <laughs> you feel totally. You're doing behind. this like, I'm putting all this work into this and, video, and then what for why? Right. But the thing is, is that there's still a huge part of the community that does 
sure. appreciate it and need it and and, and and will find it useful. Well, and what you guys do is uh, awesome because it's a big overview, right? I mean, so it's mm-hmm. it's the it's what people should watch before they go into the fight. After yeah. you're in the fight and you've experienced the fight a little bit, maybe you want to go and and check out what somebody else is saying about specifics if you're having a problem or, mm-hmm. or whatever. But I, you know, I'm always like, if you don't know the fights, go check out line of sight because you'll be done with the entire raid in 20, 30 minutes and you'll be good to go. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, and it, I, why not? Right. Yes, John. Oh, all I was going to say is uh, I find that there's two ways that I just a raid boss LOS style or like sit down with notes and take notes and read through and watch it. And honestly, I still like, uh, you know, I, I, I call the, the LOS guides in my opinion are the go-to guides that people should be using every, every week and every new boss tier. So Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're not getting sleep because I'm down in bosses. Thanks. (laughs) So I appreciate that. Um, have a monster on me, just uh, square cash me the request and we'll make it happen. <laughs> sure. But um, there is like, I- I've never really, not that like the 15, 20 minute videos are bad, mm-hmm. but I'm like, give me, give me the nuts and bolts of it. And I don't even think it's that oversimplified. I don't even think it's oversimplified at all. I think yeah. you get all the main stuff. And unless you're a raid leader, or, you know, sometimes tanks have yeah. extra stuff. Maybe, sure. I don't know, I'm a shadow priest. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do I know about tanking? Um, my my pet tanks sometimes sure. for 12 right. seconds yep. every three minutes. But mm-hmm. besides that, uh, you know, it's, and I think it's, I think it's absolutely amazing. And uh, the community obviously thinks so too. When you go look at all the new videos and there's hundreds of, hundreds of thumbs up and less than a handful of thumbs down. Like, you know, you're doing something really well and right. So kudos to you, man. Well, thanks. Kudos. I'll give you a big yeah. applause for getting it out in a week. That's awesome. Uh, and so now you can get on the PTR and, and start, start filming or. Yeah. Check, 7. Check. 7. <laughs> two's up. So we can get those, I know. We can get those, no. the Are you videos kidding? Up. That'd be and, great. And we will talk about this as we, uh, as we go through the show here today, obviously. Uh, but first, uh, John, what have you been up to today? You're rating. I yeah. Know. I, uh, we, we downed, uh, we downed heroic. Yeah. Em- Emer- Emerald Night- nightmare. Yeah. Heroic yeah. Emerald nightmare. I'll give you a pause for that. Yeah. That's awesome. I was trying to make it sound like it was heroic uh, night hold, but, <laughs> but it wasn't. No. It was nightmare. It it's... was not. Yeah, we we did that this That's afternoon. Cool. That was great. I uh, got a couple upgrades. Still no legendary, Pat. Well, Doing everything every day. No legendary. That's all right. I just uh, I I just can't get it. Can't make it happen. So been doing that. Like I said, I hit diamond on both platforms in Overwatch. I wow. uh, hit rank one last month. I'm nowhere near that in Hearthstone. Uh, just no time. Um, sure. But, you know, just been a lot of up to a lot of stuff. We started, I, I've kind of hit the editing itch as well. And we started doing something called an esports fast break on Well Met and the Payload, yep. which is like three minutes of everything you need to know from the esports from those games. Just super digestible and really easy in audio format. And then we talk about the important stuff because we're never good at talking about esports without spending way too long on it. So yep. well, been hitting that as well. It's, so yeah. it's tough to uh not like get into esports as if especially if you're super into whatever it is you're talking about. It's really difficult to like hold back, you know. So Good on you, and I yeah. was with you for I was with you for some of the uh, rating today, and that was that was fun. Yeah, we did LFR, and you were there for like the first five bosses of of three Emerald bosses. Nightmare. Oh yeah, the first five yeah, bosses were, of, of you uh, were carrying in heels, Pat. Yeah, it I, was it was really impressive. I was doing, I was doing pretty good. It was nice. Um, good for you. Thank you. And uh, the the new raid Nighthold looks beautiful. Uh, so as I know. can see behind behind Tatfa right now. Right. Make me yeah. a little jealous. And so like, behind Tanfa right now we have uh Goldan, 
is doing things. He's he's hitting things. Like, and people. As far as as far as like beautiful encounters go, yeah. I mean they they knocked it out of the park with Nighthold Star. Augur is unreal. How cool that encounter is, and just how it looks. And then the Gul'dan fight. I mean you're at the you're at the peak of the Nighthold. He shatters the walls. You can see Dalaran floating in the distance. You can see Why did you have to climb, over there. Why did you have to climb all the way up when you can see Dalaran right there? I could probably could levitate right yeah, down. Just, to, yeah. Yeah. I could, could have bypassed right all that trash. Just Goblin <laughs> Glider straight to Gul'dan. It's Float like the right secret over. skip. It's the same. It's the same <laughs> reason why we didn't do it with Arthas. You have to work your way up. I I don't. I have no idea why that is, but uh, but that's the case. So, don't you remember Elisan's huge time barrier around uh, around the Nighthold and stuff? You had to go up through the sewers and everything, right? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Now I get it. Uh. Yeah, yeah. All these <laughs> alternate timeline time <laughs> stuff. I'm just, I'm over it. I've already, yep. yeah. Now I'm yep. just expecting Duratan to come in here and break off one of. Gul'dan's tusks like he does in the movie. Oh, yeah. Since we're in alternative so cool. timelines, might so as well. Um, speaking of beautiful things, if you're watching right now, this moment in the Gul'dan fight, just right now, yep. That's is unreal. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, oh. big rip in the thing and then Sorry, just, spoilers though. People are just going to tune into the video just for this this little piece right here. That's cool. I mean, is that the, the it's nether gorgeous. thing? That's awesome. Yeah, I mean that's that's Argus. Like he's trying to bust bust out a yeah. big old summoning portal and we're yeah. trying to stop him. It's pretty that's epic. Cool. That's awesome. That looks mm. really great. Looks really awesome. I right, before we get to the news tonight, I just want to say uh one thing. Last week, this last week, uh was the CTR Guild four year anniversary, and I want to thank everybody that participated. Uh I I was there, Jules was there, Gizmo, uh uh John, you were doing stuff while you were pestering people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Crashing the parties. Yeah. Uh, but mage and wares. And uh, there were a lot of people doing a lot of different things. Uh, big thanks to Tur arts, who is our uh, events coordinator for the guild. Uh, did a great job. And Tatva, you, you did a mythic uh, deal as well, where you uh, brought somebody through and for mm-hmm. a night of, of uh, convert to mythic. So that was, that's, I paid, as well i paid tad for 20 bucks to rig that <laughs> drawing and he still hasn't taken me through or given me that back so nope. Nope. yeah <laughs> nope you're done Jokes on me i suppose you're done yeah so. it was go ahead it was it was a lot of fun and i just want to i really want to shout out the convert to mythic team all the raiders there um that made that possible like bears a uh, bearzilla um he's the person who ended up winning the drawing or whatever for yeah. that and he did great he came in he didn't even die Oh, he wow. died one fight, I think. But yeah, he he crushed it. He came in and held awesome. his own, and it was a lot of fun. Cool. Love that away. Cool, awesome. Well, I know that we've got a lot to talk about, so let's talk about it right now. It's time for the news. Okay, uh, so Legion. Let's talk Legion first, as always, uh, and we will say that right now, as of this moment, we have Wing One of LFR of Nighthold open today. As well as Mythic. So there. And, of course, it always opens up in the U.S., uh, in North America first, and then uh, uh, the EU gets it. And right now, if I look at WoW Progress, I see with my little eye that there are about 20 guilds, it looks like. Something like 20, 25 guilds with one, with at least one mythic kill. And mm. uh, Limit has five. So, and yeah, they just, and just easy, barely killed um, yeah. Krosis. Right. And Easy from, from Airy Peak. Got to always mention those guys because those guys are always up there and, and Midwinter and stuff like that. Those guys are three of 10. So uh, it's going, I don't know, it's, it seems to be going decently. Right, Tatva? Yeah, like, I mean, people are crushing it. Like, a lot of guilds um, are very extremely ready for this race. A a lot of the main um, World First guilds consider this the first legitimate race as far as progression goes. Right. Um, I know Exorcist took the first 
first blood as far as Legion is concerned, and then um, Method stepped back up. But or exo- yeah, Exorcist. Yeah. But it's it's going to be interesting to see the race. Like they're all geared. Um, the whole weird um, issue with Mythic Plus gear being allowing raid teams to be over geared for Mythics before they even open. Like that's not really a thing anymore. Um, or as big of a thing. It's still an important part, but like all of the big, all the big raiding guilds have been doing their split runs. Like I think, I think Easy did six, five or six split runs, split wow. players this last week on Heroic. So they 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 ran Heroic six times to make sure that their all of their raiders had the best gear um, available. And, Crazy. And so these teams are going like they have full like their entire raids decked out in full four piece Heroic tier 19 like they're ready to rock and so it's going to be interesting to see what they what they can Jeez. do right i was i was just excited because my tier piece dropped from lfr today and it was titan forge so yeah. i got like an 875 back that's titan forged and they just gotta go make me feel bad again <laughs> Great. <laughs> that's what they do. That's what they do. That's why they. That's why they do it, John. Just to make you Great feel. Great job. Bad. It's method. not about them. It's not about them competing with other super about me super competitive yeah. folks in WoW. Nope. It's all about making John feel bad about himself. That's what it is. Yep. yep. Uh, the Pat Crane hypothesis. Yeah. <laughs> so, so tomorrow we will see the EU jump in, and we'll see uh, all the all the big guys uh, try to try to um, catch up with limit and the other guys uh, from the U S and probably surpass them as they normally do. Uh, it seems kind of like an unfair advantage for the Americans, but, uh, but uh, not so much, not, <laughs> not really. No, uh, not at all. So I guess, not at all. so I guess tomorrow and uh, the days following will tell exactly how, how, um, well balanced this is and i really do actually have a, a high hopes for them being able to balance this better than they did the last couple of raids right because when you have um all of these things where you have to like grind for all of this gear for all of the artifact power for all of the things it's kind of difficult but now i think we're at a point where the super competitive guys those guys have already topped out their weapon so that should be okay Mm -hmm. now it's just a question of getting in there and just and and slaughtering so yeah they made mention of actually tuning the in particular the later mythic bosses to having to raiders there having the 54th trait of your weapon so that's how it is tuned and yeah like you're saying just they're not overgearing the. There's not going to be overgearing these encounters as much as they were the first go. And so, I mean, I don't. I really still don't think there's much Blizzard could have done about that the very first one, except for changing the entire system that they implemented this expansion. But yep. yeah, and it'll be it'll be fun to watch uh, exactly what happens over the next week. So let's uh, you know, good luck to all the teams out there, and I hope that you uh, that you know it finishes well, not like in a day or whatever i want it to kind of last for a while you know that's just me you're all world first in my book (laughs) except for (laughs) except for most of you uh that's funny that's funny uh so in addition to the mythic race for world first and all this kind of stuff we also had uh 7.1.5 patch notes they've they patched the patch, um, all these different <laughs> hot fixes coming in, especially when it comes to classes. A bunch of classes were changed around, uh, mages, hunters, uh, what else? Warlocks. Shamans. I mean, they're just kind of like refining some of this stuff. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed anything with your class in particular. I didn't see Yeah, they the totally Druid. forgot. They totally forgot to revert the nerfs to Shadow Priest. I was really, I was really surprised that they're like John's not topping the meters right now. Right, uh, abort then, mission, revert nerfs, please. And then they said, "Nope, that's all right. John can stay down at yeah. the bottom. He's fine." Yeah, yeah Kitty Cat's got some love. Heal. What's Kitty that? Kitty Cat's got some oh, love. Really? Yeah. Like, I mean, there was an actually actually a pretty awesome meme that popped up where someone had taken a picture and put little like 
almost like Abathur, like Pajamather. That's his skin, right? Pajamather. Yeah. On hots. I love that one. Anyways, they put like little booties on the on the feral druid's <laughs> feet, and then like a little <laughs> like teddy bear or something, and they renamed all of their abilities like ferocious nibble and tigers <laughs> meowing or something. I don't know, but that's awesome. Yeah, we, we got. <laughs> like feral is a lot of fun to play and then that was what they mentioned is that yep. we think feral's in a good spot as far as like their playability but they just gave us like every single ability got like an eight percent buff so that's kind of nice <laughs> that is cool that is cool yeah uh so you know check your check your own uh classes for for you know what actually changed with this last, last hotfix but um another th- cool thing that was updated is that when you complete a mythic keystone dungeon at levels 13, 14, or 15, you're going to get uh, item increases. And so mythic 13, uh, especially when it comes to your your what they call the grand challenger's bounty, that's the big chest, right, in your class hall. Uh, mm-hmm. If you clear a, 13, a mythic 13, you get 890 gear. If you get mythic 14, you get 895 and if you clear mythic 15, 900. That's awesome. So we're starting to see some big numbers. I like in... when my gear starts with nine. Feels good. <laughs> yeah, if all of my gear could start with nine, that would be great. Three but... digit nine, not like 94. Right. <laughs> not that, not I'm, that nine. I'm with you. Not like level 12. Level, <laughs> level 12. My, uh, <laughs> my poor man's leather bracers. <laughs> like leather bracer hand me down. Right. Right. Gray items. Yep. That would be yeah. good. That'd be good. Uh anything else happened with the hotfix? That I think those were the biggest things uh yeah. that I saw with that. Mm-hmm. Uh so let's talk about this other thing that happened. So last week, uh they cleared out the PTR from seven point one point five, which they should which it was down already. So they but they cleared it out and they put up patch seven point Two yeah! already, already, already. Insanity. It's on the PTR, uh, and we'll so talk. What are we even doing here? Uh, what are we? If you if you thought seven point one point five was a big patch, uh, seven point two is seems bigger. It's a it's gigantic. <laughs> seems gigantic. I mean, ginormous. I mean, before we even before we even dive into. Yeah. Um, the awesomeness of 7.2. It's just cool to see, because um, everyone remembers the announcement from BlizzCon. Um, Ian got up and was just chatting away about all this cool stuff. And this was something that he actually mentioned he wanted to do. As soon as a PTR gets pulled down and it made live, he wanted the next one on and going instantly. Right. And they're following through, which is awesome. Like, yeah. especially with something this big, of course, all the content's not in there yet. I mean, that's part of a, of what a PTR is, is to test it out and to kind of see what's working, what's not, make the changes, add more, add more, add more. But it's just cool to see them following through. Like, it's a really good thing to see. Yeah. And I think that we all know that Tomb of Sargeras is the, is the big raid for, for 7.2. Uh, Kill Jaden is the final boss in that one. And, uh, man, so much stuff is coming in with this i don't even know where to start uh let's see maybe we'll start with the we'll start with all the instant stuff as long as we're already there so there will be a new dungeon um we'll see a return well it's not really an instance thing but we'll see a return of legion invasions uh on the broken house so I yay like those. uh you get all your transmog gear hopefully that'll come back because i didn't get mm. it on some of my characters I really want that. <laughs> uh, uh, there will be a heroic dungeon option added for Karazhan, which I think actually does deserve a round of applause. I think that's great. And I think they're going to break it up into two parts. Sounds like. Yeah. So Upper and lower. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, let's talk about some other stuff. There's class order hall campaign. More of that. Uh, there's Ugh. the. I mean, fl- yay. <laughs> <laughs> flying is coming and class mounts that's cool uh and i know that they released all the all the different um class mounts at blizzcon mm-hmm. and people were crying yes. crying about some stuff and people were cheering about other stuff and 
People told me at the time I was playing a shaman that it was the coolest mount ever. And now I'm playing a druid and they're like, yeah, it's a druid mount. <laughs> well, at least we're huge, though. Like, yeah. I mean, we have our little like mini flight form, but like yep. the class flight form is gigantic. And hopefully we can I imagine we'll be able to carry people on our backs, which will be cool. That'd be awesome. Does your are your mounts the bottom or the body of a lion, the wings of an eagle? In the face of an owl, kind of looks like that. We basically look like the priest's mount. Yeah. No, 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 you don't. A little bit, you know, my a ish, bit. ish, a little my, bit. My my priest mount is so much cooler. <laughs> so much, so dang it, T- Tatfa, come on. <laughs> Let me have one thing. I no, can't priest- have mythic bossels. The I can't priest mount have... does look amazing. It does look amazing. It's really cool. The shadow one's really cool. It's like all decked out in like this shadowy purple. I'm all about it. There are does a it bunch have tentacles. That... Ooh, tentacles would be cool. That would be really great. You need tentacles. 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 Yep. Yeah. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Uh, so, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> so, but there are a lot of great mounts here, and and I don't think that there's anything that um is. I know that mages are kind of like, well, we only get a disc. But it's a cool they kind of went through it and it's it's kind of it's kind of neat. I mean when you look up close to the the models and stuff like that they're they're actually pretty neat. So I don't know. Yeah. I and understand the, and one, uh, people are saying it's just a disc and I'm like going, "Yeah, but look at the disc. It's it's actually kind of cool." But one of the things that Blizzard, I mean in all the different ways that they do excel, one of the things that they're best at is their little particle effects. Like they do such a good job with making stuff look amazing whether it's shoulders or otherwise so i imagine oh, yeah. those mage discs are going to have the coolest looking trail or whatever's shooting out of there it's gonna be sweet yeah it should be uh so i'm i'm looking forward to seeing all the all the class mounts and stuff like that uh let's see what else where did i leave off i don't even know uh there's a new faction there's i mean there's everything there is everything really all the things are all the things that we're doing now we're going to continue doing because we'll have to continue building out our artifact weapons and, and we'll need more class order halls because they're adding in things for, for that progression. And Mm -hmm. (sighs) yeah, it's, there's a lot of new stuff, right? We get a lot of new stuff, brand new raids, brand new dungeons, uh, brand new gear, of course, mounts and all that stuff. And then we get a lot of extensions on, you know, the story that we've been building up to as we kind of near the climax very shortly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, I think, I mean, you know, Sharku and I have a Siri bet about uh, the, you know, the timing and the aggressiveness with the patching for uh, World of Warcraft. And uh, I'm winning that bet right now. I'm, I'm winning handsomely. (laughs) <laughs> right now because there's right. there's a lot of new stuff coming out so much and the other the other really new thing is that we're gonna get um the broken shore if you remember the broken shore that's where we mm-hmm. started out our legion uh uh activities they are yep. gonna be having the broken shore as a new outdoor questing hub like timeless isle was back in the day so rares there's gonna be all sorts of different you know things to do over there so you know, you'll just kind of go nuts over there. I, but I don't understand why we even need that. Because like, we're, we're like already as as... doing all of the things all over the place. They have found they have found a way so that we are not sitting still, right? I mean, with all the world yeah. quests and everything like that, we're not sitting still. When we're in game, we're doing things. And we're doing things at the detriment of our social lives. <laughs> <laughs> what social life? And what's a social life? Uh, so, I mean, you know, it's kind of one of those things. We are already doing all the things. We don't really need a timeless aisle unless they want to build us a an area that's specifically meant to be tough. Yeah. Right. As so, far as yeah, Go as ahead. far as that goes, um, like we're out in the world, but this does have a life expectancy. You know, like sure. as people achieve what they want to achieve. Oh. There's a new piece of gear that's dropped. I already have better than that. I don't need that anymore. My my artifact weapon is maxed out. I don't need AP anymore. I'll, I'll collect some order re, order resources. I don't need that anymore and stuff. So 
our our experience out in the world will slowly go down. Yeah. You know, we won't point. need it anymore. But this this seven point two, what to keep in mind is yeah, it's live, but it's going to be a ways off. This is an sure. entire new raid, a new a new area, new yeah. world quest, new faction, new everything. It's like very new. And I think it's going to time out in a way that it will be a a nice new fresh breath of air for wow sure when it does go live and 7.1.5 took what two two months two two and a half months from when they announced it at blizzcon to uh and and it hit the ptr to when it finally went live and i mean so it's pretty safe to say we're at least that far out and i'm telling you pat if i have to collect nuts and squirrels (laughs) <laughs> one more time. Well, one here, more time. Well, I swear to God. Well, here's what I'm going to say. I will be- scream because I mean, when you take a look at it and you say, "Well, there's nothing," you know, in 7.2. Of course, you know things are going to kind of trail off a little bit. But when you look at the new order advancements and champions and stuff like that for your order hall, you're going to need fifty thousand order resources to get those different ranks going, right? So mm-hmm. I mean you're going to need change. you're going to need 50,000 order resources for that. You're going to need more uh artifact power for your new traits because they're going to be they're going to be upping that. They're going to be upping all this other stuff. And yeah, I get it. Once we get to a point where we're only dealing with more and more gear, this stuff is going to become easier. It's going to get a little bit boring. Uh maybe for those guys that have been doing, you know, these world quest dailies for ever um Mm -hmm. and yeah it's it's repetitive and yeah it's kind of it is at this point easy for me because i just i go into bear form and i just hit all the things and they seem to be fine with it so (laughs) you know or or i'm not taking much damage anymore so it's all good i can just kind of breeze right through all my all my world quests that's fine so hopefully this area will be tougher it will be uh really you know, kind of get in there and give you some new fresh rewards and, and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. There's also, Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm distracted by Tadfa getting out of the, the, the naked dance club going on <laughs> behind him in well, world of Warcraft. Yep. The, yeah. Too. Totally. Like the last half of that sentence, all I could think of was gnome booty. So, <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, no, two of the raiders on Convert to Mythic, Cliptic and Cav, were putting on a little show. <laughs> yep, I saw it. I saw what it. can you do? <laughs> but I mean, like, just as far as as far as the new stuff goes, um, like, I think it's going to time out extremely well. But right. But then even still at that point, like, there's still it's just going to be priorities. Like, I really like having a wealth of things to do. Like, I, I personally enjoy it, even though from my perspective, like I'm somewhat of a completionist um, in the fact that I feel like I need to do everything. And so I end up kind of doing everything. And so it ends up being a lot to do, but I would rather have way too much to do than nothing. Um, Yep. So I think they're making the right choices and just pushing the ball along and like, Hey guys, keep up. I I tell you, man, not no biggie. (laughs) I I think they're doing a great job uh, for Legion as far as they they've done everything. I think that they've, that we've wanted them to do, which is mm-hmm. we're not exactly. sitting in one spot where no, none of our friends are, or namely our garrison, and we're not just hanging out in Dal either. We're we're actually uh, out in the world doing things, and that's great. The raids are humming along uh, at a really good pace. Um, yep, maybe a little fast for my particular uh, wants and needs, but you know that's cool. Um, but it doesn't seem to be you know, ultra fast or anything like that. It's yeah, right. I think they, I right. think we'll see a little bit of a slowdown here. Like sure. The first three are always like the first few raids are always, it always seems like they come out fast because they have to have at least one or a couple raids ready for launch and then yep. one to back it up because progression starts instantly these days. And so I think we'll see a nice little like four or five month break where people can focus on Nighthold, finish off trial of valor, you know, and, do all the things so yep i'm excited though tumasar garris is gonna be sweet it promises to be yeah i mean finally taking it to those guys that's gonna be awesome so 
Yep. Uh, get ready for that stuff. Uh, anything else in patch 7.2 that you guys saw that you wanted to bring up? Because, I mean, there is a lot of stuff here. Um, all sorts of new... Paragon rep. Can we talk oh, yeah, about Paragon. that for a second? Oh, Paragon right. rep? Yes, yes, let's talk about that for a second, John. Go ahead. So Paragon rep is pretty cool. Basically, how it went in the past is once you get too exalted with a faction, there was really no need to go back and do anything with that faction, not even need, but you didn't even want to because there was no benefit to you at all unless they dropped a certain piece of gear or, you know, dropped order resources or whatever. So what they've done is introduced Paragon reputation rewards where basically once you're already exalted with one of the Broken Isles factions, mm -hmm. you can earn uh, special satchels uh, that you get for every 20,000 reputation points uh, awarded beyond Exalted. So additional bonuses, additional ways for you to continue to grind out things that you might need, like uh, Tatva's 11th Legendary or John's First. <laughs> right. And, yeah. you know, other, other things like that, Gold, instead of going, man, I don't want to do that, and it doesn't even help because I'm already maxed out there. So I think that's really cool and a great way to... Make all content valuable content. At the same time, it's not necessary content either to where you necessarily feel pushed to do it because it's my understanding that these satchels are very similar to what you get for your emissary quests. Is that correct, Tatfa? For Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so I'm not a complete idiot this week. Great. Not complete. Yeah. Nope. Well, no, like Not as far as 98 percent, right? Like, I mean, that's that's why it's kind of important. And I'm glad John brought this up is just because um, these Paragon levels are huge. And I don't know if Blizzard's going to do something to try to limit hoarding. They haven't as far as anything in the some of their a few decisions in the past as far as Legion goes as is. But um, if you guys do the Kirin Tor emissary quests, you get to choose your reputation token. There's a lot of tokens involved or your order hall order hall missions um sometimes will give you a bonus reputation token at the end and like i've gotten to the point where i'm just like as long as it's like 95 percent, i'll just send that quest off but now there's going to be a purpose to make sure that you do get that extra co token and you actually start saving them like in the past like it annoyed me so much just having to pick a reputation they're all exalted what what am i doing with this token and then just clicking on it and it vanishing just to get rid of it right but i could have been saving that so everyone save your tokens because once Paragon levels come out, you can have a nice little, like, maybe an extra, like, satchel to open or whatever. And yep. it'll be good. So start saving now. Yep. Nice. Start saving. Start saving, guys. That's the big thing. Uh, 7.2 is just around the corner. So get ready, <laughs> get ready for it. Oh, God, I, I hope so, not. Okay, so, I'm not ready. So let's talk about when we think that uh, the raid is, or 7.2 is going to hit. If it is on the PTR right now, when do you guys think that we might see it actually drop? They haven't done anything with the raid yet. They haven't done, as far as I know, they haven't done, they haven't put anything out on the PTR, right? So, sure. There's no raid testing. There's no. There's. I mean, it's they're adding stuff to it right now. So, well, and that's that's the other thing to keep in mind too. Is like they've introduced this way of rolling out patches in pieces and so like 7.2 can go live without um having access to the tomb yet and the way that they're setting it up it seems like that's another almost like aq event where we're breaking in to the tomb of sargeras like cool. with each each different class having their own like separate like defensive structure on the broken shore and having um because there's like specific things that were like server wide where you're going to have to turn things in or make choices to empower different battlements or this or that and so when 72 goes live there's a very real chance and a probable chance that we're not going to see an instant instant access to the tomb and so it was it can be something that Dude. say 7.2 <sighs> goes live in 3 months and then it's not it's another 3 months of work to bust in but you're getting me so amped for it though <laughs> it's really going to be are. great you really are. Like, I mean, that, I, that's the crazy thing, the pacing of the lore. Like, because, I mean, yeah. this is stuff that's been building for a long time. Like, I'm a longtime Warcraft fan. 
like mm-hmm. back from the RTSs. And yeah. like, I mean, they're like, everything's here. Like we have Illidan, Medivh's going like, I mean, he, whatever. Cadgar's going crazy. Kildraden, Sargeras, Void Lords, like everything's like kind of coming to a head. Like, I don't know how there's more content after like, because we we're going to crush the Burning Legion. Sure. We're going to go to Argus and shut them down. Like they're not coming back this time. Well, that's the whole. They're right? not. Well, oh no. come on! It's, they're not. It's a soap opera. They are they're, not. <laughs> it's a soap opera. Of course, they're coming back at some point. But, and then beyond that, it's the ultimate baddies in the universe have always been the Void Lords, and that's why Sargeras kind of lost his mind and created the whole Burning Legion in the process. But, sure. and so that's coming up. But I mean. Like that's like a galactic level conflict, and so what? Where do you go from there? Like once that goes, that showdown is done. What happens? I don't know. No idea. Yeah, exactly. No Morgan. No Morgan. Yeah, we're going. Back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no Morgan. Gotta get back in time. Yep, going back in time to No Morgan. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I guess I guess we'll just. <sighs> We'll see what happens with 7.2, but uh, okay, so do you guys have a month that you guys think that 7.2 is coming out? Tatfa, I'll April start with 25th. you. April 25th. Oh, Sorry. I would say day. I would say, like, you stole my April. I would say April for the launch of mm-hmm. 7.2, but then there will be a unlocking process that probably will be a month or two long, I imagine. A few weeks at least. So, okay. April for the patch, and then May or Juneish for Tomb of Sargeras. All right, all right. I think I'm. I think I'm kind of on board with you guys, with you fellas. That uh, late April, early May sounds pretty good. I think that sounds right. So, yep. We'll see if we're right. We're probably not, because that's <laughs> the way it rolls. Uh, but uh, anything else? Oh, hey, uh, Tatva, you were talking about the balance of power artifact appearance about how you were getting that thing. Um, how was the quest Please line? Please don't ask the question. How was the, how was the quest line overall? Just, I, I'm not asking for particulars or anything like that, but I know no. that you're... Ugh. No, no, you can ask the question. Just the thing that saddens me is yeah. like the whole reason why I was staying in this raid at the start of this and co- probably causing nightmares for Pat because I was like halfway distracted with trying <laughs> to stay. I, I wasn't playing. I was just standing there. Sure. My healers did a good job keeping me up or whatever but the whole reason i stayed in the raid instead of just bailing um for the show yeah. was to get that appearance because rave bear is best bear yeah the oh. quest bugged it's it bugged oh I no didn't get it. i didn't oh, get no item what? i don't get no rave no bear oh no so the, like uh. the thing i'm supposed to you're supposed to collect an eye of goldan uh-huh. from the encounter mm-hmm there was no I. There is no I. Anyways, but there is, by I guess the way, it's a there known. Is, there is no I in team. I'm just letting yeah, you know. Yeah, there is no I in team. But <laughs> I guess it's a no known issue. No There's no so, I in Gul'dan. Oh. I guess it's a known issue, though. But um, So who knows? We'll kill him on Heroic on Thursday, so no well, biggie, but. And, but and, I want my Raid Bear. Uh, right. Um, but, you know, maybe you should uh, put in a ticket or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Something but like that. as far as the quest line goes, like it's yeah. it is the one like overarching kind of story driven quest of Legion so far. Um, it has you doing all sorts of stuff from the very beginning, um, attached to your order hall, like seeing the Illidan, um, experiencing those, um, yep, like flashback flashbacks and stuff. Yep. I hope everyone at least takes the time. I know a lot of people, or some people, you know have different preferences like i don't like to do like some people might not like to do quests or whatever i'm here to raid or i'm here to pvp but check out the illidan quest chain it's awesome but anyways you go through that and then it goes into running random mythics you need to create a feast for odin by killing some beasts from like azuna and stormheim and other places and then i mean it's a it's a very involved quest line but it culminates in the assault on nighthold Hmm collecting some essences and then finally defeating gold down. And that's what, that's where the artifact of power quest line ends. And you access that third artifact appearance. And then you don't get an eye weapon. and then you don't get an eye from gold And then you're, then you're <laughs> SOL and you'll never get that appearance ever. And then no rave bear. <laughs> no like, rave you have, bear. 
no idea how excited I was to finally, <laughs> like, it's been driving me so crazy. And then finally, it's just like, I like, I lucked out last week. Cause I mean, it's one of those things where you need to collect 20 items from night hold. Right. And I lucked out and got 19, the very first clear. Oh, wow. And, and so I only needed one today, got the last quest, was so amped to finally have my <clears throat> rave, rave bear. Yep. No rave bear. That's right. No rave bear. That's right. <laughs> Uh, well, let's let's move on from from WoW because we've spent the last hour on it, and uh, good talk. I mean, there's a lot of really cool things happening right now, a lot of great things happening both on live and PTR. So it's been a very exciting week for for WoW, and it really has been kind of an exciting week for all the different games. Uh, but let's start with uh, Heroes of the Storm. Let's roll. Let's do it. Uh, just to, since we don't have Shark and we don't have Gizmo here uh, today, uh, and we don't really have a dedicated like heroes guy, although we all have played it, we all have played it. And I Tadfa, played a bunch. Tadfa, maybe you're the guy to to talk to about this stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you play today? No, oh, I didn't play today. Okay. No, I was making I was making a Goldan video right. and then sleeping. I went right. to bed at one p.m. today. So. <laughs> so today, in case you missed it, uh, Valera was re released. So that's out right and they're now. They're crushing it. And I'm sure that and I'm sure that we will get a review next week from uh, one of the other guys uh, that is dedicated to Heroes of the Storm. Um, also, as with all of the Blizzard games, I think all of them or most of them anyway. Uh, the lunar event is out as well. So mm -hmm. uh, you gather fireworks before the match or you will fail to please the rooster, which is <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, so, <laughs> but this is going to go enough. through, this yeah. is going to go through mid February. So lunar, lunar festival event will go through uh, February 14th. Oh, through Valentine's day. That's nice. Aww. Aww. Yep. Just in time for Valentine's day. Uh, so, so there's a bunch of lunar uh, events over there. And then let's see, is there, let's do this one. Well met. Oh, John, you have a podcast about Hearthstone, and I, th I believe it's called Well Met. Over Very at, creative, uh, Pat. Over, Very over creative. At over at blizzpro.com, <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, anything yes, going on with Hearthstone at all? Uh, pretty pretty tame overall, uh -huh. except there is one cool thing going on right now, which is the ESL Trinity series. Mm. It's a seven week long team league. And this is really cool. Basically, how it works is let's say us three right now, we're a team in Hearthstone. So you have the best Hearthstone teams, like everybody, everybody is involved. Who's anybody in this team league? And just like we are now, you can sit in a Skype call as you're playing your matches. And so it's three people playing against three other very talented Hearthstone players. Mm -hmm. And that's how they kind of made it the team league. And they do a cool thing where they actually uh, lean in to the Skype calls so that uh, the audience can hear the plays that they're talking about. And it's just really cool. If you oh. are at all interested in like that high level mindset, but you don't maybe want to try to watch streams or, you know, want to see it for the tournament environment, check mm -hmm. it out. It's at twitch.tv slash ESL underscore game or ESL underscore Hearthstone. I almost said LOS underscore gaming. <laughs> so, uh, that's, that's where I was at. Um, wow. And uh, it's Wednesdays and Thursdays. It starts early to late morning cool. sometime there, depending on your time zone. And it's it's been great. It's been one of my favorite Hearthstone events to tune into and in probably the last year. So uh, wow. that's been a blast. Awesome. Awesome. It's a very fancy name, too. I like it. The Trinity series. Trinity. Mm. Yep. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right. Uh, so that's Hearthstone. Let's maybe go to Overwatch. Anyone want a popsicle? Sure. Uh, so we also have. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! You cannot just skip over that, Pat. Why not? Where are you finding? <laughs> in... 
Why did you think that was a good idea? Well, just because. <laughs> it's always it's it was always a good idea. idea. It was actually a very it's good idea. It's always Obstacles a good idea. And that, and, and that was May, and, and May is kind of a big part of what's going on with Overwatch right now because we have the Lunar Festival over there as well. Uh, John, what is going on with uh, the Overwatch stuff for now? Yeah, so so we've got the Year of the Rooster event. It just started today. There's over 100 different cosmetic items, which is kind of custom for Overwatch events. Right. And it's all kind of themed after this rich uh, Asian culture. I want to say Chinese, but I don't want to. Well, it's Chinese New Year. Uh, it is Chinese thing, New so, Year, right? Yeah, so. Right. That's so, okay. Uh, yeah, so it's it's amazing, incredible skins. Uh, but no, wait, um, hold on. Hold they, on. I'm going to bust in. I'm going to bust in right now because I have a real problem. <laughs> I have a real problem. Oh. There is a Roadhog skin that is absolutely terrifying for me. I yeah. don't. It's it's Roadhog. You know, he's the big guy uh, with, that has the gas mask, stuff like that. They just went full out pig with him, and they bl- they blasted out this skin of... Like full pig road hog, and he has a pig face, and he has pig ears, and he has the whole thing. And seriously, I saw that in my in my lineup of possibilities that I could get, and it yep. freaked me out because I looked at it and I was like, okay, this is Amityville horror meets my eighth grade biology class meets like <laughs> all my nightmares. It was horrible. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Uh, it is very, very oh. weird. Oh, and Cause isn't uh, everything isn't else his, was like cool. mouth sewn shut as well yes. or something? Yes, and so Ooh. it's really, really weird. And John is showing it right now. I will uh, zoom in on that. Look at that guy. That look is, at that guy. That is the worst. His hook looks awesome, though. Look at that. Yeah, the hook looks great. I mean, everything except for the head. Of that guy looks wow. amazing. So it's just that head. I just never want that ever. Yeah, it's a little Hannibal Lecter for it's, me. It's really, um, you know, disturbs. It is all of the disturbs. And I cannot ugh, get that out of here, John. Yeah. <laughs> putting, a beard, putting a beard on him. All right. Hold on a second. Let me uh, zoom in on that it one. It actually works. Actually, that Good one job. looks that looks better with the, <laughs> yeah, with the beard. There it is. Not as there. bad. Nope. <laughs> yeah fair oh enough all right oh uh, well oh man. there we go that was horrible that was absolutely horrible uh but yes they have a bunch of cosmetic things including skins including the awful roadhog skin yeah um yeah that's weird and they have a new uh game mode too yes a little arcade mode yes what's, what's that so it's capture the flag and what they did is they took the three different uh points on Lijiang Tower they uh made some changes and you like it's really cool you spawn in like this big vast temple like room and uh the it's it's capture the flag so your team has a flag to defend their team has a flag to defend and uh you try to capture the flag and bring it back first to three wins i believe it's 6 minutes Yep, uh, that's a, how long the game type is. Yep, no limitation, at least as far as I've seen, as far as the heroes that can be played, nope. or the abilities. Uh, so, like one of the first games, my brother and I were trying to figure it out, and uh, this uh, person stealthed up as a sombra, grabbed the flag before we knew it was going on, and then hit her recall button. It was already three quarters across the map again wow and then i was like oh so that's why they don't have a (laughs) full-time ctf mode in here (laughs) it was uh it was really interesting but it was really cool it's it's really fun and it's a really great way to kind of take a load off from trying to grind the competitive ladder or you know doing shooting drills or whatever people normally do to try to get better at the game instead of just have a little fun and yeah it, it was it was really cool. It's cool. I like all the oh, I like all the different brawl modes that they do. Uh, by the way, we totally missed one part of things that are going on for seven point two, and I want to go back to it. Uh, and this reminded me there will mm. be mm. there will be WoW brawls for PvP. Yeah, those are coming. 
PVP Mm -hmm. brawls are coming to WoW, and for that, I seriously uh, need to switch over to this screen so that I can do the big applause, because this is awesome. I love how, and and John, you and I were talking earlier today, and we were talking about how uh, it's amazing how at some point all of these games kind of learn from each other. And they all and they all kind of figure out what they need to do to make it more appealing or more friendly or more uh, accessible for everybody to go in and there just, and just mess around. And just this is fun. This is another it's way fun stuff. I mean, they have the Brawlers Guild for the PvP for the PVE guys that just want to get in there and you know see what they can do, which is awesome. Uh, but now for the PvPers out there. Now you can have some fun with that. And so you're going to see things in WoW, like 15v15. You're going to see uh, like an automatic cap for capture the flag mode. So you don't have to bring, I don't think you have to bring it back. I think it's just more of a defend thing. Um, mm. But they're really going to play with the game modes and and figure out exactly what they need to do there, which is awesome. And I'm so glad that they're learning from, from Hearthstone and from Overwatch and from Heroes and that everybody's able to learn from each other and, and kind of use those different things to to energize the players. So that's cool. That's super cool. But yeah, this and the, uh, go ahead. And the creativity involved in it too. Like it's yeah. not only going to just be tweaks on like how you win. I mean, there's crazy tweaks involved like um, for some reason I can't remember the name of the battleground right now, the one where you're the four towers, you're out in space. I have, uh, yes, I have the I storm. Yes. I have the storm. Like that was one that they highlighted at BlizzCon, <laughs> like where gravity disappears. Like you're floating. Yeah. You're now floating and the battleground. Or you're on a goat and you can knock people off. Or like they're going to do some of the craziest stuff. And it's going to be a lot of fun yep. um, to see where they take it. Because, I mean, the sky is the limit. So yep. it'll be I'm, sweet. I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I think that'll be amazing. It'll be something that I will want to do all the time because I, for some reason... I don't know what it is, but I don't necessarily like the super competitive modes of PvP. I, I'm not like a big ladder guy. I, I don't uh, really groove on that stuff, but I will totally mess up anybody's face in like <laughs> arcade mode in Overwatch or or whatever. I'll I'll make sure to hop into all the brawls in, in Hearthstone and 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 Heroes and, and really just try to mess things up because I know that things are already messed up anyway. So so I can't lose, really. You know what I mean? So I always love that it's, stuff. It's the F word. It's the F word again. Fun. Right? Fun. Yeah. Fun. Fun. There's, uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with just having stuff in the game for fun. Like, it doesn't yeah. have to be this giant, long progression thing. doesn't have to be this big, long. I remember uh, one of my buddies was super into PvP, and he had, you know, a huge Google Sheets spreadsheet of, cooldowns and spells for other classes and it's like no i just want to have fun every once in a while and so it's really nice to have uh the the teams on almost all of the games if not all of the games just realize that hey if we just make something that's fun we don't really tie it to anything like people still love it and enjoy it and at the end of the day you know they're playing the game because they love and enjoy the game right right right. so so yeah. might as well just have another way for them to have fun with it. I think that makes total sense. And we, and we, you know, I mean, it's at the same point where you can kind of look at all these games and say, oh, they're kind of, you know, I, d- I don't like to say homogenizing because they're, they're really not, but they're it's the but word they're, I used earlier. Yeah. But the game, the gameplay seems to be, it, it seems to be kind of like, I, I guess homo- homogenizing in a way, but at least they're not, they're doing it for that particular game so it's not exactly the same but it's well uh, they're learning. homogenization has like a negative connotation because in wow every time you talk about homogenization it's you know removing was, class identity right, and right, spells and right. so we try not to use that term anymore but really what it means is that there's a lot of consistency in uh game types in systems between all the different blizzard ips right you have you know loot boxes and pack openings between hearthstone and overwatch like 
virtually identical, and that's a good thing. It's familiar. If someone goes from Overwatch to Hearthstone or Hearthstone to Overwatch, they immediately go, oh, I get it. Or right. Tavern Brawl and Heroic Brawl and all these other uh, things that we're you know seeing in the different games. Like, sure, it's homogenizing in the sense that you have similar game modes across all the different categories. But I guess I think a better word of it is consistency. There's a consistency between the games, despite the fact that they're completely different genres and completely different games. And so right. They play totally differently. They're on different platforms, different uh, team sizes. There's so much different that sometimes having that consistency can almost make it better. Maybe it feels like less of a jump for someone to go from Overwatch to Heroes of the Storm because you have that card screen at the end that kind of, you know, lets you upvote people who did the best and, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, I, I think that's a really smart thing that Blizzard's doing is yeah. find a way to be consistent while keeping your games really fresh and uh, really unique. Yeah, I think it. I think it also, like, is telling as far as how blizzard is as a as a company right now the communication that is that exists within that company like i mean they're like there's so many different ips and stuff different teams in charge of different things they all want to be successful they all want to create a good game they all want to come up with these cool ideas and stuff but it's an awesome thing for just for that company from my perspective saying like hey the blizzard guys over here Diablo guys created this whole Paragon system and this, like this, the way of doing loot. And that's like a big Diablo thing is how important loot is like, and just the loot grind. Like it's extremely exciting and that type of player loves that and stuff. And just to be able to have like the, the guys in charge of wow being like, Hey, we could use that. And that's actually a brilliant idea. You know, shout out to those guys over there, yep. but we're going to take it. And it's just, it's interesting. Cause like I could see that becoming a, a very selfish thing quickly where if you don't have good communication or not operating properly where that could cause rifts within a company sure. but i mean it's it's an awesome thing to see them just completely a hundred percent embracing it and they had to make some statement somewhere just saying like you guys see something cool from another game that the overwatch guys are doing right you know talk to them about it feel free explore new ideas and stuff and that's that's kind of a yep. cool, well, and, cool perspective and, and for a company to, to take. To be fair, I mean, WoW has been doing this for, I think, centuries mm -hmm. now. They've been doing yeah, this yeah, yeah. since their inception where the, where they were like, no, you know what? If we see a, something cool from another game, we're going to try to figure out a way to make it into WoW because uh, mm -hmm. people seem to like it. And so then you have uh, Plants vs. Zombies. You have, uh, I mm -hmm. mean, how many different things are, are in that game from other games? So many. Mm -hmm. And uh, yep. so this is just another way that they're doing it. But, I mean, the nice thing is that I think that there's enough communication in, in, at Blizzard where they're all on the same page and they're all saying, you know what, it's not about WoW versus Overwatch versus whatever. No, we're all doing our own mm -hmm. different games, so let's just try to work together to try to make Blizzard the best that it can be. And I think that they're doing uh, amazing work with that. So there, everybody wins. Um, so, yeah. So lunar events all are all over the place <laughs> in Blizzard games. That's what that's yep. what's happening. Uh, maybe we should move on to esports. Blizzard games? That's so old school. Uh huh. <gasps> uh, so <laughs> I know that we've got a bunch of different stuff. John, you've got a bunch of stuff from Overwatch, right? Yeah, yeah. Couple couple of big things. Uh, Pack South will be hosting the NGE Overwatch Winter Premiere Live Finals, so that will be going on. I believe it starts Friday, is where it's about three days from now. So I think that's what cool three days equals Friday. So that makes sense. Uh, also, another big ongoing. Don't make me do math uh, with with days. That's not that's right? not good for me. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, OGN Overwatch Apex Season 2 is going on right now. If you haven't watched uh, OGN stuff, OGN did a lot of stuff with League of Legends, um, Doa and Monte Cristo, who were kind of the big casters in uh, League of Legends for a long time, mm -hmm. have 
moved on and they're doing Overwatch now exclusively. That's how much traction Overwatch has. And uh, Apex Season 2, so OGN has a esports stadium in Korea. And uh, they're doing this awesome live LAN over weeks we're talking about here. I believe three or four total weeks. Wow. Includes the biggest names in China, Korea, and the biggest names in uh, Europe and NA, including amazing teams like Envious, Rogue, I believe is there, and uh, like Kangdu Ansia, and um, so many other, so many other. I won't start saying all the Korean names. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's that going on as well. And cool. it starts at like 2 a.m. Pacific time. Of course. So you're probably going to watch the VODs. Right. Of those, but uh, they're really great games if you're into any sort of competitive Overwatch, and especially with the yep. huge patch that pit uh, that hit today, it's going to be really interesting this next week to see how the hero pool and compositions change because they had some pretty big changes in this most recent patch for balance. Oh right, right. They added the. Uh... Yeah. The Roadhog hook thing where it's not going around the corner anymore. And... Diva's armor and health has been switched, right. which is a really big deal. Yep. Uh, and then most importantly, Anna's biotic grenade saw a big nerf where she was getting played every single game. And the right. amount of healing that she could put out on tanks was just insane. Yep. They backed that up a lot. So it'll it'll be interesting to see what teams bring this week yep yes it will yes it will uh anything for hearthstone at all you kind of uh, talked... just the trinity series right. that we talked okay. about yeah okay uh so i know that for hots and again i'm not a big hots expert but i know that uh jewel scott uh she was she uh you know we worked together and uh she was all about this all weekend she was like nope watch an hgc everybody was i don't i don't like my twitter a, blew up you know like Everybody's Twitter is blowing up about this or about politics, American politics. And she's like, nope, I'm just watching HGC. Just going to, that's all I'm going to care about. Yep. Smart, smart play. Uh, so it's HGC mm -hmm. opening weekend. Uh, Team 8, formerly You Ate My Hot Doge, uh, and Gale Force Esports are the tops in NA. Noventic and, and B Step go 0 and 2. 0 and 2. Yeah, I uh, And. EU team expert and misfits are top of the EU over there. So just a real, yeah. real brief uh, update for you all. And I'm sure that we'll have more as uh, Gizmo and Shark and I don't know, whoever else is coming back in onto the show um, for more updates on more stuff from HOTS. Uh, anything else that we're missing here, fellas? I see from Marissa mm -hmm. that we lost the Scarab thing, the Scarab event. How does Airy Peak lose the Scarab event? Like, I, I think it's just because everyone thought it was like a shoe in and so every <laughs> single Horde player was just like, no, no, this is not, this is Horde land, yeah. and then went nuts, and yeah. everyone else ignored it. <laughs> yep. Uh -oh. I know that I did. So, I was just, I was like, ah, it's, it's a thing. I don't, I won't go back yeah, over it's there. Funny. It's fine. I mean, what is it, what's the population, like, one to ten or more? No, 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 it's actually, it's actually more balanced than you think. It's just the oh, horde. It is? Yeah, it's just the horde are just kind of doing their own thing. There's no mega guild of ten thousand people on the That's horde. Funny. It's a bunch this of is, this is true. This is true. Smaller it's cutesy guilds. It leans it leans alliance pretty strongly, but, uh, <laughs> but there is there is apparently a healthy enough contingent of horde to beat us for the scarab event. So That's so funny. So they get uh, a year of scarabs in their that... under, in their underpants. I think that deserves a cheer. I mean, even though oh, it's, it's sure. the other team, like that really does. Like, I'll way do to go, Horde Airy Peak. Yep. Very well done. Yep. Next year, next year, convert to raid. Next you know, year's our Mar year. Mar you know, Marissa says it's not just AP, it's all of NA. Oh, it's all of NA. Oh, is that how that works? Oh, take that's it back. How, it's back. Back. how do you not take server? How do you? I, I guess not. I guess. Oh, I thought it was server based. Hmm. Uh, I was in. I was a low hying in Hawaii during this, so <laughs> I. Uh, well, I didn't. 
And whatever no. it was, here's what we had. This here's what the alliance had during this entire event. A clever strategy. Thank you. Uh, so uh, that's that's exactly what we had. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there. Uh, oh, the one. Yeah, I I did see something Overwatchy that I wanted to mention, but yeah. um, it, Overwatchy, it's not really that great. It's adjective. not really newsy or anything, but just as far as like the voice actors go for uh-huh. that game and how involved they are just with the community. I They're mean, the Overwatch great. community is gigantic. Those like, guys I mean, are ins- great over there. The 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 yeah. voiceover guys all over BlizzCon, they were everywhere. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And not not only there, but just like in social media, like they're they're out there. They're like becoming their characters almost and representing <laughs> Overwatch and tweeting out and stuff. And have you, have you, you seen know, the they, have you seen the uh, uh, videos where they're playing where the the guys that are the so voice good. actors are playing the yeah. characters that they voice act yep. for? Oh. I haven't seen that yet. Oh my! That's awesome. yeah. it's so awesome! It's so cool. Uh, <laughs> so you'll, you'll actually see him. Uh, do these videos where it'll be probably like usually it's like two or three of them together mm-hmm. and they'll play their That's characters amazing. and they'll and they'll do interactions with each other on Skype or something like that and record it. Um, That's awesome. Along with the yeah, game. Yeah, it's sound. really so, cool. Yeah. It's and then people neat. will animate it too, which is really funny. So then someone will yep. go through and like try to animate it. Yep. Uh, yeah. Carolina Ravasa, who is Sombra, on her Twitter, if you just ask her to boop you, she'll send you a little boop. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. She's Sombra. That's awesome. So all these guys, they just, just want to like, have boop. fun. They and it's yep. so clear that everybody on the Overwatch team was just like, "Let's make this the most fun game we possibly can," and mm-hmm. still yep. make and still make it consistent and cool and all this other stuff. And and uh, they've really knocked it out of the park. So yeah. So, yeah. so I think it was the lady that. Uh, plays may um yep. she she tweeted out just explaining the whole um new year event and the rooster thing here the rooster and all that kind of stuff and it's just it's it's cool to see and it just it adds so much to the game like all the outside stuff they're doing with the little cinematics and the comics and everything like it's such a creative thing and an engaging way for a shooter to exist it's right. like in the end it's a shooter but the way that they've incorporated story and character and all of it into this game is just it's whole, amazing yeah the whole background really cool. of it and everything yep i am happy to agree oh wait hold on a sec that was supposed to be bright wing i am happy to agree there we go <laughs> <laughs> it's a little creepy when it comes from bright wing that's all right uh anything else here fellas john's oh, got his uh He's shaking nope. his head. Not after that, Pat. Yep. Not after that. <laughs> SMH from John. All right. Then I'll play this. And let's tell everybody what we're up to uh, a little bit and where they can find us. And uh, first up, Tatva, what what are you up to now that the videos are over with? <laughs> um, I'll be, as soon as the show, this show ends, I'll be sleeping for like four days straight, I think. Um, oh. But, I mean, after that, just continuing on with Nighthold progression, hopefully... I'm actually hoping that our raid team actually gets to see some mythic yeah, action I was talking this week, to, uh, which will be a lot of fun. I was talking to Pasha, your tank, today, and she mm-hmm. was she was confident that you guys were going to see some mythic on Sunday. So uh, good luck. Yeah, it should be good. And then, other than that, like our thing, our shtick, LOS yeah. Gaming has always been our strat vids and stuff. And there's been a lot of content in Legion so far that has kept us extremely busy, but. Um, being done with these night hold guide night hold guides um, as quickly as we have been, it's going to be awesome to turn our sights on to some more consistent content. So just keep your eyes out for that. We're going to try some different things as far as um, just week weekly based content outside of our raid guides and stuff. Awesome. And so if you have ideas or suggestions on what we can do or things you'd be interested in seeing, just let us know. Um, but yeah, so just keep your eye on the channel. It's just LOS Gaming Show at YouTube, and then where you can find us and keep up with us on Twitter at LOS underscore gaming. Right um, on. But yep, more to come. Right on, right on. Uh, and John, how about you, buddy? Yes, sir. What's going on? Oh, oh man, my throat. Sorry, that was almost disastrous. That's all right. Uh, so uh, as for me, uh, doing well met in the payload, 
Uh, you can find all that stuff at blizzpro.com if you like Hearthstone and Overwatch stuff. I've been really excited spending extra time in the studio coming up with new fun bits and things that we've been doing on this show, and people have really seemed to like them. So uh, that's going on. You can find me at Kicked Tripod on literally on everything. All the or things. yes. Or just go to kickedtripod.com. There you and go. there's links to all the things there. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, let's see. I'm probably going to be doing a... I might be doing a drinking and swearing this weekend, this Friday. So check it out there. Uh, but always follow me on Twitter at Pat Crane. And I'm going to bail out of that one. And I'm going to play this one. Oh, no, wait. Not not that one. I don't like that one. It's it's two 20s. I don't like that one. I'm gonna uh... I'm going to play this one. It's a lot jazzier, more upbeat. Uh, and if you would like to join the conversation that we're having at any time, uh, please feel free to uh, d- uh, do the following. You can email us at convertorate at gmail.com. You can call and leave comments and questions on our raid line, 612-787-RAID. That's 612-787-7243. You can follow us on Twitter at convertorate. And you can join the Bazooba Guaba Nation by heading over to ConvertToRaid.com, where we have show downloads, forums, videos, audios, and more. All the guild stuff. Uh, and uh, the site was down for a little bit, but now it's all back up. It's all back up. It's all fine. Darius fixed it. Uh, Darius is in the process of moving, by the way. He might be... Uh, he's busy for a little bit. Uh, so, back online. We're all good. Uh, we're also on iTunes, the YouTubes. Uh, the internets and all that kind of stuff. So make sure to put in internet in the search and you will find Convert to Raid. Convert to Raid is uh, Convert to Raid Presents is produced and distributed by Signals Media. Make sure to check out all of our friends. Please do over at the Signals Media All Star Network at signalsmedia.com. Uh, that's going to be it for the show. Tatva, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Pat. After your exhausting you. week uh, and your bugged raid. John, thank you and your fake beard for uh, yeah <laughs> for joining us. Yeah, uh, so thank manly. you tw- Twitch uh, chat room for joining us, and thank you guys at home in the car wherever you are. Uh, we cannot do the show without you guys uh, because you are you are why we do this thing. So yeah, so thank you, and we will see you on our next show next week. So from all the guys at Convert to Raid, bye bye everybody. Bye-bye.